How's it going guys, Little Regret 265 here, and today I'll be continuing my series on the GT Sport Ultimate Assist Guide. Now it's going to be exactly what it sounds like, a deep dive into how all the assists work on the game in full detail, and how they can be utilized to your benefit in order to lower your lap times, make your gameplay experience more enjoyable, and turn you into a better driver. Now let me start this one off with a story. Once there was an assist that was introduced in Gran Turismo 5. He was so broken that everyone died. The end. In all seriousness though, for everyone who did catch on, no we're not talking about that assist, but one that sparked a similar but smaller controversy in GT Sport. And for those who don't know, I'll explain the whole story after I show you how it works. But today we'll be covering the nuances of counter steering assist. And I may refer to it as CSA for the purpose of this video, but I don't see or hear it referred to that very often, just so you know ahead of time. This one's still an active assist, but its effects are really subtle. It's designed to help you control the car by applying opposite lock, or counter steering, when the rear end gets loose or oversteers, and ultimately keeps the driver from having to do as much work. The indicator light is still going to be on the right side of your HUD, and it has a steering icon with some perpendicular lines surrounding it. White is armed, red is active, same deal as before, and that's all of the visual information that you're given, except that this one's a little different. It's a fairly dynamic assist and that's very reliant on what your steering inputs are doing, and also attempts to inhibit transitional oversteer as well, which is caused by weight transfer unloading the tires. But if your forward speed falls below 25 miles per hour, or 40 kilometers an hour, like when you're really sideways, it's smart enough to disarm itself until you reach that speed. And again, it never feels like it's disrupting you. And what's more, it comes in a couple different flavors. You have mild counter steering assist and strong counter steering assist. This just dictates when it kicks in and how much slip angle it allows for. You can only change this in the driving options menu. On the strong setting, it normally preempts any sliding of the rear end as long as you're not turning in that direction. And it works well from beginners to experts because it feels surprisingly natural without doing much to slow you down since it's only adjusting steering inputs. On the mild setting, it allows the back end to get more lively before helping out. This is great when you're feeling confident and want to increase your car control abilities without leaving yourself out to dry, should the car get away from you. You do have to be on your toes though, because it does not do much to adjust the attitude of the car unless you or another assist are also trying to calm it down. Also keep in mind for both settings that tire choice and suspension setup will play into how active and forgiving the CSA is. Back to story time. Uh, returning to GT5 and GT6, there was a trend starting to develop on the time trial leaderboards if you followed them closely. More and more top times were being set with counter steering assist, known back then as assisted steering, along with another assist, and there was some backlash against both of those assists being so powerful. This is because it essentially allowed the drivers to spend more time on the gas and picking up speed in difficult cars than might be physically possible without it. The one that I haven't mentioned was banned in time trial in those games and is not physically present in GTS, while CSA stuck around. I haven't scientifically been able to analyze the effects in those games, but I can say in GTS that it's definitely not slower. Some were complaining about its effectiveness on GT Sport as well in the early days, though the discussion has more or less died out since then, and I'll touch on that more in a moment. The real truth is that it doesn't make you faster, but it makes it easier to drive the car at 10 tenths without worrying as much about losing control of the vehicle. What's more, if the car has a decent amount of grip, it's very hard to notice the assist if you're driving carefully. So my tactical guide would be to use it as needed for cars that get loose easily or are twitchy in general. More neutral or pushy vehicles won't gain from it, but just about everything else can. It's also great for maintaining control where it's difficult alongside TCS and ASM. By the time you get to this point in the video, there's always a catch of some kind, but it might not be what you think it is this time around. While I normally mention this last, it bears saying that this assist is not allowed in a lot of serious racing online, particularly sport mode. That's why it's not as often talked about these days as it was closer to release. I can't quite remember when it was disallowed, because at launch, people were able to use it in daily races if I remember correctly, but they eventually removed it to many people's satisfaction. And despite the fact that many top drivers at the time weren't using it anyway, it was simply to prevent people from gaining unfair advantages on others, in the same line of thinking that eventually got 8 shifters banned from sport mode. You can use a controls or assist manipulator exploit the game in such a way to get faster shifts or easier better acceleration, then they would rather it be banned outright. So it is useful to try and practice with it as seldom as possible if sport mode is what you're aiming for. 
but it's still allowed in ranked time trials, oddly enough. And you can use it just about anywhere else, so the choice is ultimately yours. Some people did say that the assist felt like he was giving them more understeer when they were using it, but those claims were made much closer to the game's launch, and I never noticed that during my testing. My lap times were the same if not better, and the car felt pretty similar in most instances with counter steering assist enabled. Otherwise, it comes down to the matter of your ability and confidence to control the car, as well as reliance on other assists. Like I said earlier, CSA on its own certainly won't slow you down, and the best way to get faster in my opinion would be to lean into it and be a bit more aggressive on power when exiting the corner. But if you can't use it when racing other people, that may not be the way to go. Generally though, I would say that CSA is not going to be the make or break for someone struggling to get around the track, though it might help. It's going to be more for the driver who wants to use the NSX Group 3 or F1500 and push it to the ragged edge without losing it as often. That's just my opinion though, and many people can still use it for many different things. But for those of you who have an opinion on the matter, do you think there should be a place for CSA or ASM again in daily races, maybe below a certain DR or SR limit, or would it be too much of a shock to the system? Whatever your opinion, thank you so much for making it to the end of this one. We're really winding down towards the end of the series with only a couple episodes left. I hope you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, but if there's anything I can do to make it better, don't be shy to let me know. Even if I do get butt hurt, it's only for my own benefit. Make sure to check out the other videos in the series. The playlist will be linked at the end of the video. Stop by my Twitch streams at LittleRegret265 if you want to see more racing action. And if you want to be notified of any further content, don't forget to subscribe and check that bell icon. Until next time, I hope you stay safe, live well, and don't get your SR down too far. Bye for now.